Hello, my name is Antonio Ritz Silva and I'm going to present the work uh, Nuno Santos and myself have, have done on uh, the a complexity metric to microservice architecture migration. So basically with the, our context is the microservice architecture and on the migration of uh, monolith to microservices architecture. And we consider this particularly relevant because there's a large uh, number of um, monolith applications that um, people intend to migrate to, to microservices. And our point is to discuss basically how can we decompose this and what is the quality of the decomposition. And we are particularly focused on the cost associated with the migration and um, what we understand by the, the, this cost. So where is this cost? Well, we believe that the, the real cost is not a technological cost. The real cost is on the relaxing the transactional behavior of business transaction from exit to event, eventual consistency. And why? Well, basically because from an end user perspective, there is an impact on the perceived behavior of the system. So basically when you migrate, you're gonna change the system functionalities. And we believe there's a cost. So this is a cost that has an impact on requirements engineering phase of the software development because actually you, you need to change the, the requirements. And there's another cost because the, the functionality implementation becomes more complex. Basically because uh, business logic becomes, becomes intertwined with the handling of consistency. And this occurs basically because now we need to deal with a lot of uh, intermediate states for each business functionality. So then you need to mix your logic and deal with these uh, uh, different uh, types of consistency uh, that the, the, the data can be, okay? So the research questions you are, you are addressing is, it is possible to calculate the cost associated with the migration to a microservice architecture due to the introduction of uh, a relaxed consistency into the business uh, behavior. And the second one is, which similarity measures are more effective in the generation of candidate microservice decomposition in terms of the cost of migration? Okay, so our hypothesis is that the migration cost depends on the introduction of intermediate states on a previously atomic functionality. So this is basically from the lack of isolation from the user point of view, and the migration cost depends on the interaction that a functionality has with the intermediate states of other non-atomic functionalities. So this is a lack of isolation from the point of view of the other functionalities. So our functionality complexity it basically is defined for each functionality, and we just calculate the number of local transactions. So basically given a partition, uh, a candidate partition of uh, the monolith. We calculate the number of local transactions for each tra uh, transaction and then for its functionality and, and for each local transaction we calculate each read entity for each read entity of the functionality the number of other distributed functionalities that write it. Okay? And for each written entity the number of other distributed functionalities that read it. So this is the way we calculate the, um, the, the existence of intermediate states. So what does it mean is now that when you are redesigning your functionality, so when the software engineer is, the, is going to redesign the functionality, he needs to take into account all the intermediate states that the other functionalities can be, okay, if they use the same data. So now when you resync this functionality, actually you need to consider much more information and of, of course this will be much more complex to, to implement. Okay. So the solution is basically we try to decompose the, the, our system by transactional context. So I, ideally we would, would, would like that each functionality executes inside a single microservice in order to minimize this uh, migration complexity, right? Because uh, if each functionality is in, 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 inside a single uh, transactional context, so in, in a single microservice, this will mean that uh, 
this functionality will be basically atomic and so there will be no impact. Okay? So, all the approaches that exist basically to, to, to the migration of microservices, to, to, to migration of a monolith to microservice uh, architecture, basically what they do is that they, they do the, basically the same structure, basically they collect data of the monolith system. So they can do it in several ways, either they just uh, analyze the a system, a design of the system, or they just uh, analyze the execution of the system, they can, can, can look at the, the code base or a model of the monolith. So there are different approaches, but th in this first phase, you just collect the data of the monolith. And then you process the data. And you, you, to process the data, you apply a particular similarity uh, measure that decides basically how do you relate the entities of the monolith. Usually are the domain entities, and the, you're going to de define the distance between the domain entities in the sense that then you use this distance to in an aggregation algorithm, for instance clustering, in order to decide if they should belong to the same um, uh, cluster or to the same candidate uh, microservice or not. And then most of the approaches also present the results and they can use a, gra a graph to present the results. Usually some of the projects do it only in terms of visualization. Others also have some uh, uh, some uh, taste of a modeler in the sense that you, the, the software architect can start interacting with these the, the composition and do small changes in the composition, like uh, uh, merging uh, clusters or moving entities from one cluster to an to another. Okay, and usually while you do this they provide metrics to assess the quality of the decomposition. So uh, as the architect uh, manipulates these, the, the results, so these candidate microservices, and keep changing them, the, the system keep uh, uh, providing feedback in terms of uh, uh, the quality, so in terms of a set of metrics. In our case, we, what we have done, so we collect that data uh, statically, and then we using Eclipse, Eclipse GDT plugin, and then you generate a call graph, and then you use the call graph, and f using a, an hierarchical uh, clustering algorithm, and basically you apply, you compare with uh, several similarity measures in terms of access, read, write, and sequence. And then we generate a, dendro a dendrogram, we cut the dendrogram, generate the clusters, and then, is in the part of our visualization tool, we calculate this uh, migration complexity. So you lose a look at the clusters, and you're going to see now how, how, what is going to be the cost of uh, basically implementing it. So the cost of migrating from the microservice, the monolith uh, system to the to this uh, microservice system. Okay. So the, the, the data we collected was a particular kind of um, technology that we look at. For basically, it was a Spring Boot applica uh, applications. And the way you look at it is that just we decided each controller, which inside Spring Boot executes as a transaction, represents a business transaction. So is a business functionality. So basically, it represents a, a functionality. And then these controls assess domain entities, which are act after the decomposition, they will be split between different uh, uh, microservices. So that's where we associate this functionality that now becomes a distributed functionality that needs to access uh, different, um, or that, that needs to assess different domain entities that actually corresponds to a, an invocation between microservices. Okay. So, and they've done uh, this through the static analysis of a call graph. Okay. So, the similarity measures we, we applied basically was um, we defined the distance between two uh, domain entities, so E1 and E2. And if it is only in terms of access, we say that they are closer if these entities are assessed by the same functionalities. Okay. And in terms of reads, we say that uh, two domain entities are closer if they are basically are assessed, uh, read by the same uh, fun uh, functionalities. 
And in terms of write, the same applies for writes. And in terms of um, sequence, we say that two entity, domain entities are, are closed if for all the existing functionalities, they appear in pairs. Though they, they appear next one to the other in the sequence of invoc invocation associated with the functionality. So we just process this data and we generate an hierarchical clustering. Okay, we do apply using the hierarchical clustering, we generate a dendrogram, and it's an example of uh, the a dendrogram you generate. Okay. So for the evaluation, you apply these to three systems an uh, LDOD archive, which is a digital humanities archive that has uh, 152 controllers, 55 domain entities, and around 30,000 uh, Java lines of code. Then a blended workflow, which is basically a workflow engine that uh, contains uh, 30, uh, 92 controllers. 46 domain entities and around 20,000 lines of code. And then Phoenix Edu Academic, which is a system for the management of uh, uh, an academic campus. And um, it contains around uh, 80, 800 controllers, 40, 50, 450 domain entities, and it has around uh, 500,000 thousand lines of code and um, so basically everything so the, it, it, these are spring boot controllers and they're the the object uh, relational mapper that they use is called Phoenix framework where all the accesses are done to uh, object classes so we can identify the accesses to the, the main entities by basically uh, analyzing the reads and sets in the, on these objects so for the evaluation, what we have done, we just generate several simulations. So basically we want to analyze for all these different uh, similarity measures. And so we, we just apply different values for each one of the similarity measures. So that, so that uh, for the four different uh, similarity measures, so that the, the, the total number is uh, equal, the sum of the numbers is equal to 100. And by, we have done this for all the intervals of uh, 10%. Okay, and we have applied these for all, so these 286 combinations for all the, um, for, for, for all the, um, for, for different types of uh, number of clusters. So five to 10, so from uh, five to 10 uh, clusters in LDD and Blender Overflow and from five to 20 clusters in, uh, a Phoenix uh, Edu, but in that case, the inter in for intervals of uh, three clusters, okay? And so the idea is that um, just you, you, you apply these, we generate the clusters, and then we calculate the matrix, and we try to compare if there's a, a particular combination that uh, uh, has lower cost in terms of the migration, okay, to, to a microservice architecture. So the first thing we have done basically for it, it was to compare the, if there are some correlation between our complexity metric and the cohesion and coupling of uh, the resulting uh, uh, clustering, uh, okay, the resulting, um, the, 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 the cluster that results from the, um, applying, uh, applying this similarity measure. And so basically what we have done basically uh, by cohesion, we mean that the percentage of the main entities assessed inside the cluster by the same functionality. So a cluster has high cohesion if one, when a, a functionality uh, assesses a cluster, it uh, assesses all the entities in the cluster. Okay? And the coupling is the, per the percentage of the main entities involved in inter-cluster relationships. For instance, uh, if they are assessed in the, same, uh, in the context of uh, the same functionality. Okay? And when you compare these, we see that in terms of cohesion, we cannot uh, identify a correlation, although we may say that, okay, in most of the cases, when you, you have, so each one of these dots corresponds, now we are just analyzing, comparing for when um, the number of clusters is five, so each one of these dots represents uh, a combination of these uh, values, so of the values for the similarities. And we can see that, uh, most of the cases, when you have a, a lower complexity, you have higher cohesion, 
But for instance, in the blended workflow, we see that uh, there are uh, several cases where actually we can have higher cohesion and uh, high cohesion and uh, high complexity. Okay. But in, when we compare with coupling, that they, they look more correlated in the sense that uh, more complexity means uh, higher coupling, okay? which in some sense, uh, which makes sense. Okay. Then what we try to understand next is there's a better similarity measure, so one that performs better than the other. So we compare all the, the results, so we compare in terms of complexity for each one of the combinations of values for reads, accesses, writes, and sequence to and try to find one that is uh, better, that performs better. And the first thing we just uh, have done for each one of the, for, for each number of, uh, for, for the same number of clusters, we compare the results, the complexity uh, measure for each one of them, for each one of the combinations. And we see that Basically, the values are not so different, so you, 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 we can, have, uh, as you can see, the, the, the values are very close in, in some sense. So the complexity is around some values. You, you can find some, some outliers, but the first idea you get is that you, uh, you, doesn't, you don't have uh, so many variation and say so that maybe uh, one, one complexity uh, measure uh, sorry, one combination of um, uh, similarity values is it performs better. Okay, and then what we have decided is just tr try to understand for all the functionalities what happens for all the functionalities in, in when you pick a particular uh, combination of similarity measures. For instance, the first one is the lowest complexity where is the case where you have the lowest for uh, in this case for instance for LDD when the number of clusters is five okay and we can see again that we have some outliers but the values are very close okay so the the, the most of the functionalities have uh, uh, the same complexity when we look at these outliers, we can observe that uh, these, for instance, in this case for L2D, we can uh, observe that actually these, so the ones that I have higher complexity here, okay, we have uh, the, 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 the first two functionalities, usually they are set up um, functionalities that uh, execute at the beginning of uh, when the system uh, is set up and starts running. Which means that probably it's uh, good uh, information because probably you don't need to, to run these uh, in a distributed context. So you may have uh, defined a transaction or a two-phase commit protocol to implement them. And then you don't need to, you don't need to worry about uh, what is going to be the behavior and you don't need to have high cost rewriting them, right? Because basically you decide that they will uh, execute uh, as a, an atomic transaction. Okay, and then we try to understand what is the best combination, and so and we what you can observe is that basically uh, you cannot find for these three systems that uh, the best combination is a particular combination of values for reads, writes, uh, or accesses. Okay, and you can see very the different uh, combinations depending on the 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 system where you are looking at, but. When you try to find what is the worst combination, okay, it seems that uh, it's consistent that sequence is not, uh, uh, at least when you look at the complexity, uh, our complexity metric, uh, sequence doesn't uh, present good results, okay? So if you have a higher uh, weight on sequence, you, you get a higher complexity. A final analysis we have done, it was that we, when you analyze the, 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 the compositions that have low levels of complexity, we observe that basically they have a, a large microservice and then smaller microservices. So basically this large microservice actually is the, the old monolith that is mo now uh, thinner uh, 
And this actually is consistent what, um, with what people from industry say that the best way to decompose uh, a monolith into microservices is by doing incrementally and to try to find small macro microservices that you start decoupling from the monolith. So these results seem, seem to be consistent with that, with that approach. So in terms of related work, uh, just a few things. The first is that we are looking at a problem that I think that most of the approaches are not looking at when they look about uh, migrating monoliths to microservice services and it's about ignoring the, the cap theorem. Okay? So uh, they focus on things like uh, what is the quality of performance but, uh, or uh, in terms of uh, scalability, but actually they do not uh, um, address this problem that is, is not just saying, okay, we're going to split it, but actually there's a big cost in terms of uh, what is the impact of, of losing the, 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 the transactional behavior okay, when, you, when you migrate to the microservices architecture. And uh, there are work, so we look at work where people have uh, basically done uh, reads and writes and or sequences, so that's why we pick uh, our, these different types of similarity measures. And um, only, only one work uh, look at this problem of, of uh, the cost associated or the cost of the, so a metric that takes in, uh, into account the complexity associated with distributed transactions. And we add on top of it, because basically what they have done is they count the number of distributed transactions associated with, it, with functionality. And we have to have done, we basically add also this idea of observing the intermediate states of the other uh, uh, transactions, okay? So as a conclusion, so we have a complexity measures that address the, um, the complexity measure that uh, addresses the cap theorem when migrating a monolith to a microservice architecture. It was evaluated with three systems. Uh, we found no best decomposition of, uh, uh, no best composition of similar, similarity measures. And the sequence uh, similarity measure has the worst results, okay? And uh, our conclusions are consistent with the idea that uh, we can have, a, uh, it's a good idea to have an incremental migration. In terms of future work, you are looking at the use of uh, microservice patterns to tune the complexity metric using the developer's read, during the developer redesign of the monolith. So basically the idea is that um, what you want to do is now that you have this decomposition and that we have this uh, cost, is to tune the cost by deciding that in a particular interaction between uh, two microservices, you are going using a saga, if it is an orchestration or, um, or, or a choreography, and try to recalculate the cost in terms of uh, the particular implementation in some, stem, in some sense, guide the software architecture on that decision how to implement a particular functionality. Then we need, you want to analyze more um, systems, so Spring Boot and uh, GPA, not only the Phoenix framework, so that uh, we are doing this so that we can analyze with more systems, apply this to more systems, and then compare with the uh, dynamic analysis, and uh, we suggest the refactoring uh, in a monolith that may reduce the complexity of uh, the migration. So here what you want to do is um, you want to look at the monolith and before we apply the decomposition, identify in the monolith something that should be refactored previous to the decomposition such that then we can have a lower cost in the decomposition. And the example you can have from this basically is when you, when you do object-oriented programming, you have very uh, 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 finer grain invocations, and then sometimes when you do a decomposition, we discover that we have a lot of interactions between uh, microservices, recurring interactions, but just to get some value. And you can do, a, a, before you implement, you, before you migrate, you can do a, a refactoring that you, you transform several uh, fine-grained interactions into uh, uh, coarse-grained interactions. Okay. Okay, thank you.
And um, so no time for questions and answers. Thank you.